Level 1. The Veil. You're not asleep, not yet, but you're not really awake either. You're drifting in the strange liminal borderland between consciousness and oblivion, a state neurologists call hypnagogia. This isn't a dream, it's the loading screen. Your brain, preparing to shut down its external sensors, starts to misfire. The first thing to go is coherent thought, replaced by a flood of raw, fragmented noise. This is where you see it, the pulsating lattices, shimmering cobwebs, and spiraling tunnels. In the 1920s, scientist Heinrich Kluver documented these as form constants, the universal geometric patterns the visual cortex generates in the absence of external light. Think of it as your brain screensaver, a default pattern to keep the visual processing hardware from being poached by other opportunistic brain regions during the long, dark night. But it's more than just a screensaver. This is also the realm of the Tetris effect, where the day's repetitive activities bleed into your pre-sleep consciousness. Spent all day laying bricks? You'll see falling brocks. Coded for hours? You'll see lines of syntax scrolling behind your eyelids. Your brain is desperately trying to process and file the day's cognitive load. It's in this chaotic state that you might experience a hypnic jerk, that sudden terrifying sensation of falling which jolts you awake. Some evolutionary psychologists theorize this is a primal reflex from our tree-dwelling ancestors, a built-in alarm to prevent them from falling from a branch. Or you might hear a sudden deafening bang, a phenomenon aptly named exploding head syndrome. It's not a gunshot. It's your brain's auditory shutdown sequence glitching out. Level 1 isn't a destination. It's the treacherous, shimmering veil you must pass through to enter the true architecture of the mind. Level 2. The Static You've slipped past the veil. Welcome to the shallow end of sleep. You are now in the early stages of non-REM sleep, and this is where the concept of dreams as meaningless brain noise gets its strongest evidence. The electrical activity in your brain has slowed to lazy theta waves. There were no stories here, no plots, no characters, no coherent landscapes. Level 2 is the realm of the static, a disjointed slideshow of fleeting, disconnected images. You might see a face you vaguely recognize, then a bicycle, then a floating teacup, all disconnected from any narrative context. These are thought to be the raw data dumps of your hippocampus, the brain's short-term memory storage. It's like watching a film strip made of random discarded frames from your day. One moment, a snapshot of your keyboard. The next, the color of the car that cut you off in traffic. These micro-dreams last only seconds and are rarely remembered. They're the brain's initial clumsy attempt at memory sorting. It's not elegant, it's just raw, unfiltered sensory residue bubbling to the surface. Most people spend half their sleeping hours in this state, a cerebral junkyard of the day's perceptions. This isn't the deep, symbolic world of REM sleep. This is the brain taking out the trash, sweeping the cognitive floor. But even trash can tell a story. The content of this static, however random it seems, is a direct reflection of your waking life's focus. It's the purest, most unvarnished imprint of your daily experience before your subconscious mind gets its hands on it and starts twisting it into something far more interesting and far more terrifying. Level 3. The Forge The brain is done with its initial data dump. Now the real work begins. As you descend into deeper sleep, you enter Level 3. The Forge the dream is still incomplete, a vast and empty void, but it's no longer just static. Here your brain becomes an architect of feeling. This is where the concept of the dreamscape is born. But it's not the serene, surrealist art you see online. It's primal and raw. Your amygdala, the brain's emotion processing core, hijacks the dream building process. It dredges up not just any memories, but the ones tagged with the heaviest emotional weight, fear, desire, anxiety, joy. These emotionally charged memories become the raw material, the molten ore from which your brain begins to forge a world. That feeling of dread from a missed deadline doesn't manifest as an office. It becomes a vast, empty, colorless desert under a sickly green sky. 
A surge of joy from a past victory might become a sun-drenched, impossibly vibrant field of flowers. At this level, the landscape is the emotion. There's no plot, no people, no structure. It's a purely architectural representation of your internal state. Dream researcher Antti Revonsuo calls this selective simulation, where the brain builds a minimalist stage designed to embody a single overwhelming feeling. It's the archetypal emblem of the void, but a void that is being actively filled. This is your brain stress-testing its own emotional software, rendering your deepest feelings into a tangible, albeit bizarre, environment. This foundational landscape, built from the pure, chaotic essence of your emotions, will become the stage upon which the madness of the deeper levels will unfold. Level 4. The Echo Chamber The stage is set. The emotional landscape is forged. Now your brain starts populating it with the ghosts of yesterday. Welcome to Level 4. The Echo Chamber this is the heart of memory reconsolidation, a chaotic and crucial process where your brain decides what to remember and what to forget. It's no longer just about feeling, it's about reliving. The hippocampus is now in a frantic dialogue with the neocortex, replaying and reinforcing neural pathways. In this stage, your dreams become garbled, distorted replays of your recent experiences. This is where you find yourself back at the office, but the floor is made of sand and your computer is melting. You're trying to make coffee, but the machine dispenses angry wasps. These aren't metaphors yet. This is your brain running diagnostics on its own memory files, and some of those files are corrupted. The infamous airport dream fits perfectly here. You're scrambling to catch a flight, but the gate keeps changing. Your luggage is filled with bricks, and the departures board is in a language you can't read. This isn't a metaphor for your life's journey. It's a literal manifestation of the anxiety and frustration of your brain trying to complete a task. The task of sorting and storing memories and failing. The logic of these dreams is fragmented because the memories themselves are being pulled apart, examined, and stitched back together. This is a messy biological process, not a cinematic narrative. You are an unwitting observer in your brain's own library, watching the frantic spectral librarians reshelve the books of your life, often putting them in the wrong sections just to see what happens. Level 5. The Puppet Show the brain has sorted its files, however clumsily. Now it starts to tell stories. Level 5 is where dreaming makes the critical leap from raw processing to symbolic narrative. This is the puppet show. Your brain, having amplified a core emotion in the forge and replayed the associated memories in the echo chamber, now attempts to give it meaning. But since the linguistic centers of your brain are mostly offline, it can't use words. It has to use metaphors. It has to use archetypes. This is where your raw anxiety about a looming confrontation doesn't just create an empty landscape. It creates a story. The story of being chased. The pursuer is a puppet, a symbol. It might wear the face of your boss, but it is not your boss. It is the personification of your fear, your unresolved conflict. The narrative isn't logical, it's emotional. The reason your legs feel like they're stuck in cement as you try to run isn't a failure of physics, it's a perfect representation of the feeling of helplessness. Carl Jung would argue that your brain is pulling these puppets from a collective unconscious, a shared library of primal human symbols, the shadow, the dark pursuer, the anima or animus, the mysterious compelling stranger, the wise old man, the cryptic guide. These dreams are built around one of five central themes – identity, desire, fear, loss, or conflict. The dream about your teeth falling out isn't about dental hygiene. It's a classic puppet show about loss of control or fear of judgment. Your brain distills a complex emotional state into a simple, universal, metaphorical play. You are the audience and the protagonist in a silent, symbolic show staged by the oldest part of your mind. Level 6. The Hollow Deck. The puppets are no longer enough. The show must become real. 
In level 6, you enter the hollow deck. This is the deepest stage of REM sleep, where the dream transcends narrative and becomes a fully immersive, high-fidelity reality. Your brain is now firing with an intensity almost identical to when you're awake. The thalamus, which normally gates sensory information from the outside world, slams its door shut. The only reality you perceive is the one being generated internally. But now, it's not just a visual. It's sound, touch, taste, smell. It's the feeling of the sun on your skin, the taste of ash in your mouth, the sound of a voice whispering your name. The simulation is so complete, so convincing, that your motor cortex begins firing signals to your body to act it all out. You're fighting a monster, so your brain tells your arms to swing. You're running from a tidal wave, so your brain tells your legs to sprint. The only thing stopping you from leaping out of bed and clotheslining your bedside lamp is a tiny cluster of cells in your brainstem called the pons. It induces a state of near-total muscle paralysis, known as REM atonia. Your mind is living in a high-octane action movie, but your body is locked down, a prisoner in its own bed. This is why sleeplocking almost never occurs during vivid dreams. It happens in the shallower, non-dreaming stages of sleep. The holodeck is the brain's ultimate VR simulator, running complex scenarios with breathtaking realism. It's a playground, a training ground, and a torture chamber, all running on the most powerful graphics card in the known universe, the human brain. Level 7. The Agents. The simulation is running, the world is real, but something new and deeply unsettling starts to happen. The characters in your dream stop being puppets. They start acting like they have minds of their own. Welcome to Level 7 the realm of the agents. These are not the simple archetypal figures from the puppet show. These dream characters can hold complex conversations. They can surprise you. They can tell you things you consciously don't know. A dream character might reveal a solution to a complex problem you've been stuck on or offer a piece of advice with startling wisdom. This phenomenon is so common that many writers and scientists, from Mary Shelley to the chemist who discovered the structure of the benzene ring, have credited dream characters with their greatest breakthroughs. So what are they? Neuroscientists might tell you they are simply personifications of your own subconscious processes, different modules of your brain taking on a human form to communicate with your conscious self. A Freudian would call them manifestations of the id. A Jungian would say they are aspects of your psyche you have yet to integrate. But from the dreamer's perspective, the experience is uncanny. You are interacting with an entity that feels separate from you, an independent agent living inside your own head. They can get angry, they can lie, they can have their own agendas. This is where dreams cross a terrifying boundary, from a world generated from you to a world that feels like it's being generated for you, populated by autonomous beings who know your deepest secrets because they are your deepest secrets, wearing a mask. Level 8. The Glitch. You're deep inside a perfect simulation populated by autonomous agents. It feels completely real, and then the rules break. Level 8 is the glitch, the point where the dream's physics engine begins to catastrophically fail. This isn't just the weird emotional logic of the earlier levels, this is the fundamental laws of reality shredding themselves to pieces. You can suddenly fly, not by flapping your arms, but by simply deciding to. You can phase through solid walls. You read a line of text in a book, look away, and when you look back, the words have changed completely. Clocks spin backward. Gravity becomes a suggestion, not a law. Why does this happen? The leading theory is that the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain responsible for executive function, logic, and critical thinking, goes almost completely dark during REM sleep. Without this logic chip online, the simulation is free to run without constraints. It's a feature, not a bug. Your brain is exploring possibilities outside the rigid rules of waking reality. It's running creative simulations, testing impossible scenarios. This is the source of creative problem solving, the thinking outside the box that happens while you sleep.
but it also creates a deeply disorienting experience. The glitch is the signature of the dream world. It's the telltale sign that you are not in Kansas anymore. It's the uncanny, exhilarating, and often terrifying moment when the code of your reality reveals itself to be nothing more than a temporary, editable script. For most, this glitch is just a bizarre experience, but for a select few, noticing the glitch is the key that unlocks the next, most coveted level of all. Level 9. The Mirror. You're flying. The wind is whipping past you. It feels utterly real. But then, a tiny part of your brain, a flicker of that dormant prefrontal cortex, reactivates. A single, critical thought breaks through the simulation. Wait a minute. I can't fly. And just like that, everything changes. Welcome to Level 9, The Mirror. This is lucid dreaming, the moment you become aware that you are dreaming while you are still in the dream. For the first time, your conscious mind wakes up inside your subconscious. It's like looking in a mirror and seeing not just your reflection, but the entire hidden architecture of your own mind. In this state, the glitch becomes your superpower. The broken laws of physics become your new tool set. You have entered the ultimate sandbox. You can change the weather, summon objects out of thin air, or walk through walls at will. You are the architect, the developer, and the god of your own internal universe. But with great power comes great instability. Just because you're aware doesn't mean you're in control. The dream state is a delicate, volatile system. Try to exert too much control and the dream can collapse. Or worse, the other inhabitants of the dream, the agents, can turn on you. There are thousands of reports on scientific databases and Reddit threads alike of lucid dreamers who excitedly tell a dream character, you're not real, this is all a dream. Only for the character's face to contort in rage. They scream things like, you're not supposed to know that, or we don't like it when you watch, before the entire dream population turns hostile and swarms the dreamer. The mirror shows you your true self, but sometimes the reflection fights back. Level 10. The Abyss. You've achieved lucidity. You've played in the sandbox. You think you've reached the final level. But there's one more door, and what lies beyond it is the deepest mystery of the human mind. Level 10 is the Abyss. This is where the structure of the dream itself becomes the subject. The most common and terrifying manifestation of this is the nested dream, or false awakening. You wake up from a nightmare, relieved, you get out of bed, go to the bathroom and look in the mirror, only to see your reflection is wrong. Your nose is on your forehead. Panic sets in and bam, you wake up again. For real this time? You're not sure. You check the mirror. It looks normal. Relief washes over you. But then you glance at your hand and you have six fingers. Bam, you wake up again. This loop can repeat sometimes seven or eight times, each layer of the dream becoming more and more indistinguishable from reality. It's a terrifying psychological trap, a labyrinth built from your own consciousness. Why does it happen? One theory is that it's the brain's attempt to sync your waking awareness with your sleeping sensory input, a boot-up sequence that keeps failing. But this is also where we encounter the most speculative, fringe ideas. This is the realm of mutual dreaming, where two or more people claim to have shared the same dreamscape on the same night. It's the territory of precognitive dreams, where dreamers witness events that later happen in reality. Scientifically, these are dismissed as coincidence or misremembering, but for those who experience it, it feels like tapping into something beyond the confines of their own skull. The abyss is the final question mark. It's the point where neuroscience falls off a cliff, leaving us only with strange, unverified reports from the furthest shores of the human experience. It's the unnerving suggestion that the rabbit hole of dreams might not have a bottom.